a word that doesn't sound right, uh, blame my English teacher, my wife. Uh, I'm going to be an Adam, the wife you gave to me. But uh, I thank the Lord. I, I know everybody here. We're family. We're home. And, uh, and I just, just thank the Lord. And I, I, seeing you guys being faithful to the Lord, just continue serving the Lord. Uh, I remember when Preacher was opening up this place. We were here. We were here with them working, you know, and, uh, and just to see what the Lord has done and with the other church that the Lord has done and, and everything. You know, just keep our eyes on the Lord. And, uh, and, 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 and the Lord has a great place here, and uh, we're just glad that you're here. For some who don't know me, I'm, I'm Pastor Manahim Marino, uh, Spanish pastor of the First Spanish Baptist Church in Coatesville, PA. We have the greatest neighbors in the world. There's a cemetery next to us. And they don't bother. They're, they're awesome. And uh, we're there. We, the Lord allowed us to start the church in 2004. In 2004 and by the Lord's grace, we've been, uh, we've been plowing it away. Uh, my wife and I, my wife Sarah, Matthias, Micah, Ma Mana, Micah, Matthias. Uh, Mana was born. Matthias and Micah were not born. But thank the Lord. Uh, the Lord, the Lord allowed us to start the church in 2004, and 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 it had um, it's 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 starting from zero. It's 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 starting, but thank the Lord that when you start, you don't start alone. You start with the Lord, and you start with the people you love and your wife and your kid, and thank the Lord. We're gonna celebrate 19 years. 19 years, thank the Lord, and we're able to acquire property and, uh, and, and a parsonage. So thank the Lord and, and a nice group of people who, who want to serve the Lord. And uh, if you ever want to come down and visit us, we invite you to come down and visit us. Uh, we have a, a big conference on August 5th. August 5th, the, uh, Uncle Burton, preacher, is going to be preaching. Cuñado is going to be preaching. And I translate for him, and we have a great time. We're going to have a, we're going to butcher a cow. We have steaks, we have steaks, we have, uh, we're going to roast a pig this year. We're going to roast a pig. Like, you guys are going to do all that? Yes, we are. And uh, we're going to have taco night, we're going to have tamale night. So we're going to have all kinds of theme with the preaching. And you know what the theme of the whole conference is? He has done all things well. And we just want to, we want to exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because, hey, he's done all things well. And we're just glad for that. So, hey, you guys are invited. I know your preacher will be there preaching, preaching in, 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 in English, and I'll be translating for him in Spanish. And we're going to have a great time in the Lord. Um, I would like to invite you to open up your Bibles, please, to the book of Job. Chapter 19. And I would ask that you would stand up for the reading, for the reverence of the reading of the Word of God. We're going to read verse 1 to verse 8. And um, I grew up in Brooklyn, and, uh, and uh, every time I come to Philly, it reminds me a lot of Brooklyn, you know. But, uh, uh, but thank the Lord that there's a, a church in the city, and we need churches in the city, and we just thank the Lord for the faithfulness of every one of you guys here in this church. Job chapter 19. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 8. And that will be our, 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 our text tonight. We're not going to go away. There's a lot of things in this passage that we're going to, we're going to gather up and, and, and allow the Lord to use it and, and, and pray that the Holy Spirit will impact upon us the truth that could help us in our lives, in our daily walk with the Lord. Are we all there in chapter 19, verse, verse, I'll read verse 1, you read verse 2, and we'll go there until we get to verse number 8. Then Job answered and said, This ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me. If indeed ye will magnify yourself against me and plead against me my reproach. Behold, I cried out of wrong, but I'm not heard. 
I cried out loud, but there is no judgment. He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass. He has set darkness in my path. I want to preach to you the subject tonight. He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass. And we're going to speak about the life of Job. And we're not going to speak about the Job of chapter 1. We're going to talk about the Job of chapter 19. He has fenced me up. He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we love you. And we just thank you for being here today, Lord, and gathering with your people, Lord, to gather around your word and, and just gather around you, Lord. And I pray that as I preach your word, that you would help me, Lord, that you would give me a, a clarity of thought and, and tongue to speak and to bring forth your word, Lord, with your authority, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit, and we be all yielded and that we will, you will be our teacher tonight, Lord, in everything that we say and, and do here today, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, and we just thank you for all you've done, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you for everything. Amen. The title is, he has, fenced, he has Fenced Me Up That I Cannot Pass. Job, we know the life of Job. He says here, he has fenced up my way that I cannot pass. This was a man that God hedged and God blessed greatly. This man was, was described by God as a, a man of perfect, a man of uprightness, a man of, that sheweth evil. And the Bible said that there is none like him in the earth. So this man was a great man because God had a great, a great testimony to him. He was a great man. And the Bible says in chapter 1 that Job was, his life was hedged. The Bible says that Job had a great family, uh, seven boys, three girls, 7,000 7, sheep, 3,000 camels, and a whole bunch of things. Job was a blessed man. But the Bible said that he, was, he was, had a great household. The Bible said that he was a great man in the east. But let me be clear. He was not great because of his possessions. He was great because who he possessed, and that was the Lord in his heart. He was a man that walked right. He was a man that walked in integrity. He was a man that, that God has greatly blessed. And the Bible says that this man was Hedge. Because chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says that, the devil said, oh, you think he blesses you because, because, of, uh, because he wants to? He's blessed because you has hedged him. You see, it's an it's a awesome thing of the testimony that Job had, that the devil had his number. He said, hey, Lord, I tried many things, but thou has hedged him, and I can't touch him. And you know the story. The Lord says, okay, do what you want, but don't touch his life. And we know what happens to him. But when Job, when the text we read, he has fenced up my way that I cannot pass. It's in chapter 19. And as we read this passage, Job enjoyed the blessings of the Lord that the Lord has provided for him. He was not asking God to get him out of the way. You know, when, when things are going well in your life, when, when things are up, up, up in the eye rise, when you're up in the, in the mountaintop, you don't want to tell the Lord, Lord, Get me, I try to get out, but the Lord doesn't let me get out. Because you enjoy it. And Job was enjoying that. But hardship came in his life. A testing came in his life. A moment of trial came in his life. And the Bible says that he said, he has fenced me up. He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass. And I'm going to look at tonight for just a brief minute and apply this truth how this applies to us. What can, I, what can you and I do when you're fenced up and you can't get out? And we all been there once in a while in our life. And let me tell you, it's not a pleasant moment. It's not a pleasant moment. And Job, we'll see how he describes this here in, his, in the passage. Bear with me because I have everything here. Okay. Let's go to Job chapter 19 and we're all there. Put this on the top. Job's pleads, but no answer. We see his plea. And, and, and look what it says. His, his friends came, um, Ilbal, Bilda, and Zohar. Uh, they came to him, and I don't know how to say it. They came to him, and they, they thought they were going to help him. And, and they were not any help to him. They, they were just, just destroying him more and more. Instead of uplifting him, they were destroying him. They were no help to him. 
And the Bible says that, uh, the Bible says here that Job pleaded, he has fenced me up and I can't get up and I can't pass. Look what he says in verse 9. This is Job talking about the Lord. He has stripped me of my glory. He has taken the crown from my head. Job was fenced up and he couldn't get out. Job started, when he, what Job saying is, look, the Lord has put restrictions upon my life and I can't get out. I, you know, I, I want to leave already. I want to go with the Lord, but the Lord doesn't allow that. I want this, this to go away from me, but the Lord has not allowed it. He has fenced me up and I can't get out. He has stripped me of my glory. What he was saying is this, the, the Lord has restricted me. He has stripped me of my authority. The Lord has taken away that, that authority in which I had. He has taken away my family. He has taken away my kids. He has taken away everything. And, and, and I am not longer this, this God that I was. Because people felt, felt that he was in sin. People thought he, the wickedness that came upon him were because of his sin upon his life. And Job said, he has stripped me. He wasn't talking about his friends. He wasn't talking about his wife. He wasn't talking about nobody. He was saying, the Lord has stripped me of my authority. The Lord has stripped me of all those things. Now we understand why he said he has fenced me up and I can't get out. Notice what he says in, in verse number 10. He has destroyed me on every side. And I am gone and my hope has he removed like a tree. Job said, not only the Lord stripped me of the glory, but the Lord destroyed me on every side. You know, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's a hard thing. You see, he, he wasn't talking about his enemies. He was talking about the Lord. The Lord has destroyed me on every side. Job was in, in a place, in a place where he lost hope. Job was in a place that, 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 that wasn't favorable for him. And Job said, I, 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 I try to get out, but I cannot. The Lord has me here for a reason. And, and, and let me tell you, Job was in a, in a tough spot. He stripped me of my authority. He had destroyed me on every side. Whether I look to the right, I'm destroyed. Whether I look to the left, I'm destroyed. Whether I look north, I'm destroyed. The, Job said, no matter where I go and how I go about it, the Lord has destroyed me on every side. Not only that, but look what he says in verse number 11. He has. And notice that he has. It's the Lord that's doing all this who's allowing all this to happen upon his life. He has also kindled his wrath against me, and he's counting me unto him as one of his, what? Enemies. You know, Job felt like he was cast off. He said, the Lord has kindled his wrath against me, and he's counting me unto as one of his enemies. And Job goes on to give a list of, of, of people. Look what he says in, in verse number 13. Um, he has put it, my brothers, far from me. My acquaintance are very strange and strange from me. My king's folk have failed. My familiar friends have forgotten me. They, uh, they that dwell in my house and my maze count me for a stranger, for I am an alien in their sight. I have called my servants, and he gave me no answer. I entreated him. With my mouth, my breath is a strain to my wife, though I entreat it for children's sake of my own body. And what is Job saying? Look, everybody just turned against me. My servants have turned against me. Uh, my wife has turned against me. I, I become a stranger in my own home. And the whole Job saying, hey, I am, he has fenced me up and I can't get out. So let's get a breath of what he's going through. Everybody has turned against him. The world has turned against him, against him to the point where Job felt like the Lord forsook him. And he said, he has fenced me up that I cannot pass. Job pleaded to the Lord, I want out. I'm unable to continue in this situation. But you fenced me up and I can't pass. You see, we read about it in the Bible, but the reality is sometimes we're going to go through that valley. 
And sometimes when you look back at life, you were fenced up and you couldn't get out. And, and now when you look back, you thank the Lord that he's fenced you up. Because if he didn't fence you up, you would have never learned what you learned and what you know today. And, and, and Job here, it, it's, it's literally to a point in life where he's pleading, but there's no answer. What do you do? And we're going to see in verse, 20, in verse 23 what Job did that we can do when we are fenced up and we can't get out. Notice what Job did. What can I do, Brother Marino, when I am fenced up and I can't get out? What do I do when I feel like the world's turning against me? What do I do when, when my loved ones feel like I'm turn, they're turning against me? What do I do when, when, when I feel like I'm standing alone? What do I do when, when, when things are not going right? Let's look at what Job did. Verse 23. Job says, Oh, that my words were not written. Oh, that they were printed in a book that they were engraving with the iron pen and lead in the rock forever. You know what Job was saying here? Job's desire was to record his testimony. You see, oh, he said, oh, if I had a pen and I could write everything. Though my friends have betrayed me, though, though my kinsmen have failed me, though my familiar friends that I love have forsaken me, and I get to the point where I feel like the Lord has forsaken me, I, I'm fenced up and I can't get out. What do I do? I want to record my testimony. I want to record everything that the Lord has done in my life. And I want to record it not only for the present but for the future. Job says, I want to record, number one, I want to record God's goodness upon my life. You see, Job saying, hey, I'm fenced up, I can't get out. He resolved that he was in, in, in a fence, he couldn't get out. His body was, was not going anywhere. His friends were not helping him anywhere. All seemed impossible, but Job said, hey, look, while I'm here, while I'm not feeling well, I'm going to start talking about the goodness of the Lord. I want you to get me a pen, and I want to start recording everything that God has been. God has been good to my life. God gave me seven children, three, uh, seven boys, three girls. God has given me this. God has given me everything. He went to the right and record the goodness of the Lord in his life. You see, when you're in that place where you can't get out, the best thing you could do is write about the goodness of the Lord in your life. Job said, hey, I want, I want to write about what the Lord has done. Hey, if the Lord can't take me, I'm going to talk about him. Just like Paul said, hey, Paul said, hey, I, I'd rather be with the Lord. I'd rather be with the Lord than to be here, but it's more profitable for me to be here. See, Paul said, I'd rather go with the Lord. Job said, hey, if the Lord's going to keep me in here and I can't get out, well, I'm going to record what he's done in my life. God is being good. He said, hey, I don't want you looking at my, at my sickness. I don't want you looking at, 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 at my defects. I want you to look at what God has done in my life. So he said, hey, give me your pen and let us write. And that's what we got the book of Job. Not only the goodness of the Lord, but number two, the great trial in his life that purified his faith. You see, Job said, hey, not only was the Lord good through the trial, not only was the Lord good while I was fenced in, but that great trial he brought upon my life, it purified my faith. It, it made me a stronger man. And, 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 and Job saying, the Lord, the, the, the world needs to know that though he fenced me up and I can't get out, I'm going to write about his goodness. I'm going to write about the great trial that purified my faith. You see, I like the last point. Uh, the goodness of the Lord, the great trial in his life that purified his faith. Hey, look, what do I do when, I, when the Lord has fenced me in and I can't get out? You stay there. He is doing the work. He, I know he's not the, he's the Alpha. The Alfredo, Alfredo. No, no, not that one. The one that makes the clay. Potter. I'm the potter. He's the potter. And when he's doing, he's building. Hey, look, 
You might feel like, hey, Lord, I don't understand why my family is turning against me. I don't understand why, 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 why I'm suffering and all the ones are doing good. Just remember, there's that trial that's purifying your faith. He's making you, he's making you, he's making you better and better each day. A great trial. And, and, and Jacob, Job, Job's desire was, Lord, I want to record what you're doing. But I want the world to know that you're a good God. You're, you're a good God. Even though this is going on to me, you have done more good than bad. And I want the people to know. And let me tell you something. Hey, what's going to help you get out of that valley is brag on the goodness of the Lord. Don't con- the devil wants you to concentrate on the bad. Concentrate on the good that the Lord has done. And, and, and here Job says, hey, write about the goodness of the Lord. Oh, if I had a pen, I want to write this down. The goodness of the Lord, the great trial, but listen, the great grace of the Lord. The grace was manifested in the latter part of Jacob's life, uh, Job's life. You see, Job said, it was good at the beginning. I went through a trial in the middle. But the latter part was better than the first part. You see, Job spoke about the grace of God in his life, of how God led him through everything. I remember uh, year 2021, uh, we came back from vacation with the family, and I was, um, I told Grandpa, Grandpa, yes, I'll help you, we're going to do work. And I got up on the roof, I went all around the house in the roof, went up, down, up and down, up and down. And on the last moment, I went up, on the ladder, uh, on concrete, which is not recommendable. And I had um, a bucket and something in my hand. And I was going up the stairs. And next thing I know, the, the ladder the ladder starts coming down. You know, like Michael Jackson started going backwards. So I say, what do you do? You try to go up higher or you jump? And I was like, and as I was thinking about that, the ladder kept going, do, 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 do. So what do I do? I jumped off. And I jumped off, and I landed perfectly. But I heard something crack. And a weird pain. I cracked my heel bone in half. Heel bone. I'd rather break a foot, break an ankle, but not a heel. And I, I knew something was wrong. There was a gentleman, and I said, do you have Tylenol? I was, he's like, yeah. So he gave it to me. And then I looked at him. You think this is going to work? He said, if something's broken, it's not going to work. I broke my heel bone. I had to have operation, surgery. Three months unable to walk. You talk about a person who's very highly active and doing stuff and being a pastor and being a father and, and, and just normally being a person outgoing. And your, and your life is just your bed or wheelchair and your bed and your wheelchair and your crutches. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get out of it. I was in bed, read books, I was wheelchair, I was here, I was there, I was there. I tried to walk on the leg, but you can't. The doctors are got smart. They put it in an angle that you can't put pressure on it. Well, you can't even walk on it. Not even if you try to, you can't walk on it. But you know what? The Lord had me fenced in. I wanted to get out. I wanted to walk. But let me tell you, it was in those three months that uh, that I was able to be more time with the Lord, and, and I was able to read more books and, and read and read and, and just be around the Lord and organize. I, and in, in that time, I, be, I became a youth director. In that time, I became a drama director. Which, how did you do the drama director? I had a play for the church. I had so much time in my hand. We started doing a play for the church, and, and we played out. We made out a play. Though I felt like I couldn't get out. Though I felt like I was restricted. Though I felt like, man, I can't do nothing. Let me tell you, that's the most time the Lord did more stuff in my life. Let's be careful. 
Let, 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 what, what do I do, Pastor? If I can't get out, what do I do when, when I'm fenced up my way and, he, and I can't pass? What do I do? Record the testimony. Record what the Lord has done. Hey, isn't Job been a blessing to us? Yeah. Didn't James say, hey, how about the patience of our brother Job? Yeah. See, those words were recorded. Not only were his words recorded, but look what Job says in verse 20. In verse 20, 25, 25. Job's desire was to record his testimony. But look at verse 25. It says here, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. You know what Job's saying? Not only do I, 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 I want to I wanna write down, record the testimony, but I want to make a declaration. Hey, no matter what this old dirty devil try to do to me, though he took my family, though no, nobody wants to, to be with me, though these three clown friends that I have don't support me, though the world's turned around against me, I know, he said, my Redeemer living. I know that the, the things look dark. I know that when he darkened my path, I know when he, he put sores all over my body, I know that regardless of everything he's done through in me, my Redeemer liveth. I want the world to know, he says, not only of my testimony, but I want the world to know of my faith in the Lord, an unmovable faith in the Lord. I declare today, though he has fenced me up and I cannot pass, I'm going to trust the Lord in the valley, he says. And, and Job makes that clear to, to us, for I know my Redeemer liveth. And I, and I thank the Lord. Hey, just think about it. The whole world against him. But he said, I know this, my Lord liveth. You see, you can shake me all you want, he said. You, you, you could do everything you want, but you're not going to move my faith from the Lord. Just a simple application. What do I do when I fessed up and I can't get out? Record your testimony. Brag about the goodness of the Lord and don't brag about your problem. Brag about the Lord. Be unmovable on your faith. Don't let nothing persuade you away from the Lord. You see, the majority of the people and Christians, when they feel like they're fenced in, the first thing they do, they quit on the Lord. And, you, and they quit on the Lord. And when you quit on the Lord, you're making a bad decision. Uh, the Lord, no matter, hey, the darkest day as a Christian is much brighter than the darkest day the devil can offer you. The Lord is good. And Job said, hey, I, I, want, I want the world to know in, in this writing of my record, my testimony, I want the world to know, hey, though I'm going through what I'm going, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I know my Redeemer liveth. And he should stand in the latter day upon the earth. He said, he's going to be there no matter what. Make the declaration today. When I'm fenced up and I can't pass, I'm going to trust the Lord. You see, I believe this. You have to make up your mind today. Because if you wait when the trial comes, it's too late. Too late. You got you to you re resolve that no matter what comes in your life. Now, you might say, Pastor, I'm, I'm doing fine right now. I'm doing good, and that's good. Praise the Lord for that. You're in Job chapter 1 right now. Just remember that. Uh, you're in Job chapter 1. But Job chapter 2 is right around the corner. It could be tomorrow. You could go to the doctor, and the doctor says, you have cancer. You could go to the doctor, and the doctor says you have three days to live. You could have a tragedy in your family. You, you don't know. But you don't wait for those things to happen to, to act upon those things. You, 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 you make up your mind now. We all, get, we all get car insurance for a reason, right? Because if you have an accident, the car insurance is going to cover your accident. You don't have an accident, then you get car insurance. That doesn't work that way. Let the Lord be in insurance now, amen? Let the Lord be the one that says, Lord, I'm going to trust in you no matter how, how, how deep the waters are, how hot it gets. I'm, I know my Redeemer liveth, and I want the world to know that, he says. That's how you manage to stay in that fenced up place where you can't get out. 
his declaration, but I like his last one, verse 26. And after, and after my skin warms destroyed this body, yet my flesh, I shall see God. You see, Job's, Job wanted to record his testimony. Job made a declaration of his faith of the Lord. And Job rested in the hope that he was going to see the Lord. He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness in my path. But Job said, Though when my body is consumed in this earth, yet shall I see the Lord. You see, this is how you manage to live with joy when you're fenced up and you can't get out. You don't lose your joy because you brag about the Lord's goodness. You don't lose your joy because you're, you're living a faith, a life of faith in the Lord. But also, Job knew that the latter part would be better. He was going to see the Lord. And you see, we need to set these things upon our life and use his example. I believe in this. I, I believe in just using Bible example. I love preaching, but I love sometimes grabbing passages from the Bible and just seeing how the Lord worked. And he said, hey, I know I'm going to see my Redeemer. So no matter what happens, no matter who forsakes me, I'm going to see him one day and I'm going to worship him. I was reading in those three months that I was on bed rest, whatever you want to call that, bed rest, unable to walk and be. I got into a lot of biographies. I got into reading so many biographies and so many biographies. I had a routine that I would just read and read. And um, I love Adrian Judson. I love Jonathan Goldforth. But Jonathan, uh, Adrian Judson, missionary to Bruma, um, how he was, um, God sent him to preach to the people, and, and he suffered many things in his life, and, and he lost of children, and, and just so many attacks that came upon his life. But I love the last, the ending part of, of his ministry when, when he's in jail, not because he committed wrong, but because of, of his belief in the Lord and his publications of the Bible. And they imprison him. And at that time, the Bruma and the British were into war. And the story says, and I don't know fully, but I know this, that he was there for like 17 months in prison. And then was transferred to another prison where they had a lion in a den. And they thought that they, they were going to be fed to those lions. And every day they said, well, this might be our last day. We're going to see the Lord today. And, and literally, that's what they would say. We're going to see the Lord today. He thought he was going to die. I mean, they were malnutrition. They, they were on, on no good condition. And, and he, just, he just wanted to go with the Lord. And one day they didn't hear the, the lion roaring. And what happened is that the war came to an end. And they needed to make a peace treaty between the British and the Bruma. But they needed a translator to translate the English to the Brumian language. And guess who was there? You see, he was fenced up, couldn't get out, but the Lord knew what he was going to be doing. He thought he was going to die. But the Lord said, no, you're going to translate a, a peace treaty between these two nations, and you're going to have freedom. You see, don't lose hope in the Lord. You might be fenced in today. doesn't mean it ends today. There's a tomorrow. And there's a God sitting on the throne still. Amen. And look, hey, I was fenced in for three months, but those are the best three months of my life. Sometimes we need those moments. Hey, you can have salt and pepper on the table. You need both. You, you just can't drink sugar. You need salt in your body. You need it. And, and it's very important in the Christian, we, 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 we brag about the good things. Oh, the Lord's been good. What about the valleys you've been through? You got to thank the Lord for those valleys. 
Because if it wasn't for the valleys, you'll never be who you would be today. Job said, record it. And when you record it, I want my declaration, my Redeemer liveth. And I want the people to know that if he takes my body and, and, and takes me away and I never got out, I'm going to see him and I'm going to worship him. I just want to encourage you tonight. Are you fenced up and you can't get out? Be careful. Say, Lord, take me out. The Lord might be teaching you something. He's teaching you. I'm fenced up. I've just been a year already passing. I can't get out. Don't worry. God is never late. He is never late, and he never makes mistakes. So you could trust that. And, and it may be that what you're going through is he's polishing you. He, he's teaching you. He's molding you more like the image of his son. And he's teaching you how to walk. And he's teaching you how to depend on him. And he's teaching you all these things that are going to make you what you are to be. For, the, for, for your family and, and, and your generation. I am fenced up. He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass. He has set darkness in my path but I'm going to follow him. I just hope and pray that God's word would help you in your life as you journey and you walk through this life. There will be moments of fenced in, but there are moments that he's going to purify your faith and make you greater and make you stronger. And I just hope that with the Lord's help, you and I could see great things done in each and everybody's life here at Liberty Baptist Church. And may the Lord continue to use you guys. And just remember, just because he has fenced you up, doesn't mean he gave up on you. He loves you. And I just want to encourage you to just, hey, you're fenced up today could be your tool to help somebody else tomorrow. After my surgery, I had a gentleman at church this year who literally broke his. My son got home. He said, Dad, he's going to call you up to take him to the doctor. He messed up his leg. Literally broke. Big operation. And I was able to be with him. And he was able to ask me questions. Pastor, what did you do when this happened? What did you do when this happened? And when you thought it was a bitter moment in your life, it becomes a sweet moment in your life when you can help everybody, somebody else. And God always has best for us. Though you're fenced up and you can't get out, trust the Lord. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Father, I, I pray, Lord, that uh, you will use your word, Lord. Not my words, but your word. You know every heart here in this church. And I pray, Lord, that uh, if you've spoken to, to hearts, Lord, that we will be faithful to you, Lord, and, and talk to you about what you have talked to us about, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that, and I pray, Lord, that you would just work in everybody's heart today, Lord. I pray for your spirit to move upon everybody, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that if somebody in here who's, who's thinking about throwing the towel or planning on quitting because it's too hard, Lord, may they follow you, Lord. I, I pray that you would move in, in this invitation, Lord. Now, when the piano is playing, I, I know the custom here is to give an invitation, and, and I believe it's the right thing. What's an invitation, Pastor? Come and talk to the Lord about what the Lord talked to you about. Come and talk to him. Now, you might be saying, Pastor, I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm not fenced up. The Lord's good. But you know somebody that's fenced up. You know somebody that wants to throw the time. Why don't you come and pray in the altar for that person? May the Lord put people in our heart that we know that they're fenced up. And they're planning on quitting on their family, quitting on the ministry, quitting on their church. Why don't we take the time to pray for them? Say, Lord, hedge my family. Thank the Lord.
Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would move and apply each word to each heart, Lord. We also your word, Lord, and we know what it says, Father. And I just pray that you would help us, Lord, and as we are sometimes in the valley, Lord. Sometimes we're, we're hedged with goodness, or sometimes we're hedged with, with trials. But through it all, Lord, you are the great Lord. I pray, Lord, that I, we will live for you, Lord, and we will uplift your name, and that we will carry, Lord, your name through the next generation, Lord. Thank you for Liberty Baptist Church here, Lord. May you continue to bless me. You continue to use it to further the gospel, Lord, around the neighborhood here, Lord. Lord, we thank you and we love you, and we just thank you for, for loving us, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Some folks are still praying, and, and that's fine. You know, right now, if if uh, if you're not currently going through a trial, you know, maybe, maybe you do know someone that is, and let's try to be sensitive to to the people that are going through them. And uh, you know, I'm thankful for messages like that that remind us that when when we are in the valley, that you know, the the, the Lord hasn't forgotten. He does know what He's doing. It's not by an accident, and and, and the Lord is still in control. And uh, so we, we, we thank you, brother, for, for coming and giving the word to us tonight. I believe that was of the Lord. I believe the Lord definitely w was in that. And uh, I believe many people needed to hear that tonight. So we do thank you. And uh, okay, so re remember to keep pastor in prayer. We'll be back, Lord willing, this Friday night or Saturday morning. And uh, again, with the junior church trip, if you have any questions about that, make sure you see Brother JR, because pastor is obviously not here right now. Get signed up ASAP, and if you can come to the 4th of July picnic, please come. And, and bring food. Please bring as much food as possible, because I'm going to eat everything I see there. But, um, but yeah, let's pray. Father, thank you for tonight. Just thank you for your goodness, for your mercy. I thank you for the, for the Moreno family, Lord. I thank you for, for using them, Lord. I thank you for, for their ministry and their, their burden and their love for the Spanish people. And, and Lord, there, there is such a great need for, for both English preachers and also Spanish preachers. And, and Lord, I pray that you would call men to, to start more churches and, and, uh, and to reach more, more people in, in the city, in the suburbs, the country, the hills, where, wherever they are, Lord, where, wherever the people are is. And uh, Lord, we just love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you are dismissed.